Hi guys and welcome back to the Big Sew Along. I'm Ginny and as always I thank you very much for choosing to spend some time with me. I have a few things to talk to you about today and I am going to start with this one. This beautiful fabric that I have draped up behind me here. This was originally um, a piece of linen that I got from Fabric Mart Fabrics back in the uh, springtime and over the course of the summer, I came up with this idea that I wanted to um, do something with some painted fabric, but I wasn't really, I don't really want to do the painting. <laughs> um, that's not my thing. I'm not very good at it and, and whatever. Anyways, I have a really good friend um, who lives in New York. Her name is uh, Becky and she is an artist. She's also a teacher. And um, so I talked to her late in the summer and asked her if she would do a collaboration with me, if she would be willing to do the painting on the fabric. Um, and then I would turn it into something else. And this is what um, I sent her the fabric, I think around the 1st of September. And this is what it looks like now. And I'm completely, completely smitten with it. I just think it's amazing. I love the colors she chose and the shapes. Um, my original idea was to do some, um, to make a garment and then do some embroidery on top of it. I'm not sure if I really wanna do that now because I love this fabric so much. I'm not sure I wanna, um, I'm afraid that embroidering on it might take away from uh, what I love about it, but we'll see. She did not paint the whole fabric. Here, I'll come out a little bit so you can see. There are spots that are open. That's because I um, sort of drew out the pattern I wanted to use so that she didn't have to paint any extra fabric. It could just be like the parts that I was actually going to use for the garment. Anyways, I'm very, very excited about that. So I've had it for a couple of weeks now. And um, I'm going to get to work on that hopefully this week. Okay, aside from that, I am wearing today my first pattern I made from First Down Berlin. This one is called the, I look at my notes here. Did I say First Lounge Berlin? It's an Etsy shop. And again, I will, I think she actually has a, a regular web shop too. But anyways, I'll link her stuff below. And I'll also um, link to Becky's um, Instagram so you can look at her artwork. I do have one of her paintings hanging in my house, which is one of my most prized possessions. Um, she has a lot of other stuff on there, but if you scroll through, you'll see some of her really beautiful artwork. So I'll, I'll leave a link to that below too. Okay, my sweatshirt is, this one is the First Lounge Berlin mullet sweater and hoodie. I had a little bit of trouble with this one, not because of anything wrong with the pattern, but because it is translated from German into English, and I admittedly do not speak a lick of German, so the directions were fine. What was an issue for me was figuring out what size I wanted to make, given that um, in the pictures you see it several different ways. Some are really fitted, some are like loose and oversized, so it was hard to figure out what size I needed to make to get the look I wanted. Um, so I ended up just measuring the pattern and according to the pattern directions, I would have been a size 42. So I measured out the size 42 and it would have been like a regular fit sweatshirt. Knowing that I wanted it to be a little bit oversized, I went up two sizes. I, went, I cut a size 46 and I made no changes to it at all in terms of the sizing. Um, the other thing I did that was kind of dumb, um, the directions are fine, but some of them are printed on the pattern and, um, the collar is supposed to be cut on, like the center back is supposed to be cut on the fold. The pattern piece says cut two on the fold if you read German, but I don't. And again, that's my fault, not hers or the designers. Um, so I actually cut this twice, but I cut the back, I had an opening at the back. So I just put a seam up the center back, which made it a little bit bulky to put my collar in, but it was fine. At the end of the day, it really didn't make that much difference. I just know now if I'm gonna make it again, I will cut the collar on the fold. The other thing I did was, this has um, a bottom band that is meant to be uh, tighter than the actual sweatshirt so that it brings it in a little bit. I did not want that. So um, I cut the band, I, I just measured the hem of the sweater once I got it together, and then I cut the band to, to the same length and so that it would just lay flat, 
more or less flat. This has a slightly curved um, front hemline, so it doesn't really lay totally flat. And then um, I put little side slits on the side just at the band. That was my friend Marsha's idea, and I think it looks really cute. Um, you can't see in my pictures here because I have my sleeves cuffed up. But the uh, sleeves are pretty long, so if I make this again, I think I'll just shorten the sleeves probably about two inches, and I think it will be fine. Um, if you are familiar with with sewing and you have made several garments and you know what you're doing, you know what size you wear, and you can measure a pattern, this pattern shouldn't be a problem for you at all. If, however, you're going to rely heavily on the directions, um, particularly in terms of sizing, then th this probably is not the pattern for you just because I feel like that's a little bit confusing. Unless, of course, you speak German, in which case you're good to go. Again, none of the issues I had with this were due to the pattern itself. It is a really simple pattern. Um, it's easy to alter and to change around, and she has a lot of really creative ideas in the pattern for um, inspiration. So there's that. I happen to really like this. I love this neckline. Um, it's a little bit high, which is fine for me. I love this, but I know a lot of people don't. A lot of people will find this to be too cumbersome. It does, however, look good folded over, look good, looks good crunched down, and again, it's super easy just to shorten that a little bit. This also comes with a um, hood. Uh, option. I chose the fold over collar but, or the wrap around collar, but it does have a hood option. Okay, that is really all the sewing I have for you today. However, I have something else to share with you. Uh, I have to get my pictures here. They're all on my computer this week. So, last September was my, my birthday um, and as a special treat for my birthday this year, my husband um, arranged for my, me and two of my friends, uh, Susan and Patricia, sorry, Susan and Pat, she goes by Pat, um, to go to the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan, which is where my husband works, um, and have a private, uh, what's it called, um, tour of the textile archives which we just did, which we did just uh, this past Monday. It was amazing. Um, now this stuff doesn't really have anything to do with sewing per se. However, I found this stuff to be incredibly inspirational. So I thought I would share a few pictures with you. I was not allowed to take pictures in the archives um, because they're all photo protected and everything or, or whatever, <laughs> whatever that is. Um, but the Henry Ford Museum does have an, a, a really good website where they have all of their archives, or most of their archives are digitized and you can actually look them up. So, I thought I would show you what I saw. Um, I'm gonna start here with this collection of garments and some of these are dark because the garments are dark. So I, I have close-ups when I can and I apologize for anything else. Anyways. This first um, few pieces are from the Elizabeth Park Firestone collection. In this collection, they have a ton of uh, Kristen Dior and uh, Cristobal Balenciaga from, I'm going to say, from the 30s to like the 50s. She also has some uh, garments made by a designer named Peggy Hoyt. She was uh, an American designer. Those were earlier. I believe um, Elizabeth got married in the 20s, so like around that era maybe. Um, Elizabeth Park Firestone uh, was married to Firestone from Firestone Tires. She was, a, I guess, a big socialite. Anyways, so the pictures I have here for you are this first one here is a Kristen Dior suit, which is, of course, amazing. <laughs> Um, I can't remember, but I think this one is a, um, a wool. I did see this. It looks black here, but it's actually very dark, dark gray. I really love this button detail that you can see here on the collar. I think that's really interesting. Um, it also has a really beautiful collar itself. And then this picture here, again, I apologize for it being a little bit dark, but I just wanted you guys to see this hip pocket, how it's actually curved to mold over the shape of the hip, which I thought was incredible. Um, this dress here is one of the Peggy Hoyt dresses, so it was from early on. This is like a, 
chiffon, a beaded chiffon. It's, it, this thing was really beautiful. Um, there's a picture up the back. Um, and here's an up close picture of the beading, which is all hand done. Um, this was an amazing piece. The colors in this were beautiful. There was also another one in this sort of sea green bluish color that you see here in the beads. Her other dress was that color with silver beads on it. This one, I can't remember, but I think this one is another Dior. Um, this is just a really simple dress with this incredible um, embroidery on it. This is all hand embroidery. And I don't know if you can see these really beautiful, um, the way they did this really beautiful shaping at the waistline to make that V going up. And then those incredible like bows on either side of that embroidery. Oh, here's the other one, the other Peggy Hoyt. Um, again, this one is an earlier one. And then I have an up close picture of this beading, which was just amazing. I mean, it was just really beautiful. Um, this one here is another, uh, Dior. This looks like a really pretty simple, straightforward 1950s dress, except that this fabric was insane. Um, I believe it's a silk. It was really heavily, it had these really thick ribs in it. And the way they got this to fit like so beautifully in a fabric that, that was that dense was just, in, was just incredible to me. They also, I hope you can see this, they have this little seam line right along the side of the bust that goes straight down into the front of the skirt. So when you're looking at the front of the dress, it looks, it sort of outlines the um, hourglass shape. Um, and here's an up close picture of just the um, the front and the little jacket that went over it. Um, Elizabeth Park Firestone had an incredible selection of shoes. I am a diehard shoe fan and have always been that way. Um, these this pair of um, red leather Oxfords that were um, created for her by a uh, custom shoemaker in Paris. Um, I believe in the 1930s, it was my personal favorite, but then I'm an Oxford kind of girl. She had thousands of shoes. Um, and if you ever have time to look at her collection, you should definitely check out the shoes because they were amazing. I don't know who made these gloves. This was just an example of, uh, of some of her many, many, many accessories, but I really love the way they decorated these with um, just those little pearl buttons and contrasting thread in the center of each button. That's something I really love doing myself, um, using a contrast color in thread, or in a, in a button. But I love the way they use this just to decorate these gloves. I think it's really beautiful. And here's another pair of gloves, just with a little, um, tiny little embroidery on there. Okay, that was it for Elizabeth Park Firestone. They have, um, many, many other collections. Uh, they, we saw many, many more things than that. I just can't possibly show them all to you here. Um, especially because I wanted to show you the other thing that we spent a good time looking at was uh, quilts from uh, a quilt maker, I would say an artist named Susan McCord. And Susan McCord was around in the mid 1800s. She was an American. I can't really remember where she was from, so I apologize for that. Um, and I also apologize that these pictures don't do any justice to these quilts. I am not a quilter and I have never been a quilter, but I can honestly say that looking at these quilts made me wish that I was one because I just thought these were unbelievable. Um, the amount of detail she put in these and every single piece, they are all pieced. Um, I shouldn't say that some of them are applique, but all, everything is done by actual hand, like no sewing machines involved. Um, this is one of her more famous um, crazy quilts. I absolutely love this. I think that it has like this real, um, what would I call it, almost modernist look to it, especially given that it was made in probably the 1860s or 1870s. Again, I can't really remember. Um, I think her colors here are just amazing. Um, and again, these pinwheel things, they have sort of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Industrial feel to them. Uh, I really, I just really love this. 
Um, this is another one of hers, and again, the photo does not do it justice. These, um, I, th I think, I can't remember what this is called, but it's a, something tree. You can see in this picture, each one of these trees is made up of uh, these little teeny, tiny triangles. And I mean like, probably about a half an inch by a half an inch on these triangles. And they are um, each hand sewn and hand turned. And, and they're absolutely perfect. It was just... The amount of craftsmanship and the, the way she did her hand stitching was just stunning. Uh, this is another one that she is very famous for. I believe it's called something urns. And this really shows off her sense of color, which I think is really beautiful. The other thing I think is really amazing about this is, um, I'll try to, I'll try to take a, I'll try to blow up a piece of this so you can see it, but there are these little flowers, um, not the big bloomy flowers, but the ones that look like little dots. Those are made by teeny tiny little hand turned circles of fabric sewn right next to each other in like, I mean, it's unbelievable. Like I can't even imagine how much time that took. Also these um, lines, these vines that go all the way around the border are pieces of fabric. They're applique on, um, again, and hand turned, so there are no bra edges, and they're stitched down. I, well, I was like inches away from this quilt looking at it. The stitches were so close together and so fine, you really could not even see them. It was, again, I was completely blown away. Um, this is another one of her urns, and I guess um, the curator there was telling us that this vine motif is something that she was really known for. Okay, well, I hate to jump around or anything, but apparently I missed something, and I really wanted to show you guys. Um, I I'll do this first. Okay, so this here's a picture of Susan McCord um, at her home. I believe she's with her husband, her daughter, and her granddaughter in her picture. She uh, Susan is the woman on the far, far right sitting in some sort of a chair. And this is a house in which she made all these quilts, which is obviously not a big house. And so I'm... I I'm confounded as to where she even found the space to make quilts because these are full size. Most of them were full size like bed quilts. Now, to be fair, at this time in history, most people didn't have such a thing as like a king size bed, but they were still be big enough for an adult bed. And I thought that was really interesting. Okay, so now I missed these pictures before, but I did want to show you. This is a picture of um, Elizabeth Park Firestone. I can't remember really when this is. I want to say this was in the 1930s. She was someplace in Africa or South Africa. I apologize for not knowing exactly. But um, I just wanted to show like the uh, extent to which she got dressed to go on a quote unquote safari. Um, I thought that was pretty amazing. And then this very last picture I'll share with you is um, Elizabeth Park Firestone. Um, and a portrait taken by uh, Cecil Beaton. I don't, again, know exactly the year. I'm going to say 1930s. In any case, it's just an, it's an amazing photograph, and um, it shows her in one of her uh, couture gowns. Again, I don't know which one that is, but there were so many. So, not a lot of sewing today, but hopefully you will find some of those things inspiring. Um, if you're interested in seeing more of those uh, collections, the, Sus the Elizabeth Park uh, Firestone or the Susan McCord um, collections are both available to view online, and I will leave links to those below. So, last week, <clears throat> I was talking about my, um, my uh, pants with the Runtolds inspired knees, but I was also talking about my... Um, Eve pants from Merchant and Mills and how I altered them to add a pocket and uh, no waistband waistband and Faith asked for a tutorial on how to do that so I am going to be working on that for you guys for next week. Alright guys I think that is it for me this week. I hope you found this enjoyable and informative. I know that I found my trip to the Henry Ford completely inspiring um, and I hope you did too. Until next week, I wish you all happy sewing.